What's going on YouTube? It's Tyler and today I'm going to list and explain the top three antenna preamps that I recommend. Now before I get into the specific models, I want to explain exactly what antenna preamps are. Basically what they do is they amplify the signal at the antenna so that you don't lose any of the signal when running it through the coax. Contrary to what some people believe, it doesn't automatically bring in new stations if you don't have the stations in the first place at the antenna, but it will get you more stations if you're losing some of the stations that may be weak through a long run of the coax cable or some splits that you do sending it to multiple TV sets. Some of you, if you're hooking into multiple TV sets, you may be able to get away with a single antenna preamp plugged into one of those unpowered splitters that you can buy at Walmart for like five bucks. But others of you may need an amplified distribution splitter. I recommend these two channel master models for four and eight port distribution. If you have four or eight cable outlets that you're trying to use to run to different TV sets, that would definitely give you a little boost in addition to the preamp if you have a really weak signal going from your antenna. I should also mention there is a key difference between a preamplifier and a regular inline amplifier. The preamplifier amplifies the signal at the antenna, so you have maximum amplification without any signal loss. Some like this is an inline amplifier, and it only amplifies the signal where it's connected in at. So in other words, if you have an antenna on your roof and a 20-foot cable going into your basement and you hook this in to the coax, it's only going to amplify the signal where it's hooked in at, so there's already some signal loss. This Despite this, it's still an option to use these inline preamps if you are setting up an attic install and you have access to a nearby outlet to plug it in. Preamps are mostly for people that are installing the antenna on top of the roof and you don't, you, can't, you don't really have an outlet on top of your roof so you can't really use an inline amplifier in that scenario. The power goes through the coax cable so that's how preamps work. One way you can determine if a preamp is necessary for your scenario is if you go to antennaweb.org and type in your address, it'll show you what the signal strengths are like for each TV station that reaches your area. And if you see blue or purple, those channels will most likely need a preamplifier to amplify the signal. So that way you don't lose some of the signal which can result in more dropouts or losing the station completely depending on how weak it is. However, if antennaweb.org you see most if not all your stations have the yellow color or the green color, that means they are already really strong and not only do you not need a preamp to watch them reliably, if you install a preamp and it amplifies a strong signal too much, it can overload and not show the channel at all. Now if you look on Amazon, you'll probably find five or six preamps and think, hey, I can try getting away with buying the cheaper one. Don't do that. And these are two models that I do not recommend buying. This RCA model here, although the amplifier works very well, the power supply is usually defected in about 25 to 50% of cases based on the reviews and my experience. So the power that you plug into the preamp only goes to nine volts and it's supposed to be 12 volts to power it. So either it just won't power at all or it'll work for a little bit and then break within a few months. This WineGuard model, although I used it in two scenarios, the first scenario worked for a month or two and then broke. I looked on the reviews on Amazon and apparently that's a problem that a lot of people have. And the second time it was just completely dead on arrival. So based on my experience and others, I would not purchase these two preamps. So last year when I started doing some tests with various preamps to see how well they worked and their quality, I discovered this model behind me on the screen at the local Walmart for $20. And the first thing I thought when I saw it is I'm gonna buy one it's not gonna work well, or I'm gonna set it up in an antenna install and it's gonna break within a few days to the point that I just wasted $20 on nothing. Sure enough, I discovered it works very well. It makes up for existing loss in the coax if you have a long coax. It may not be as strong as the other models that I'm gonna list, but it's definitely a good little boost to put on your signal if you have some weak stations, but you have some strong stations and you don't wanna over amplify the signal and possibly lose some stations. This model works pretty well. And in one scenario, I was in a very bad location. The guy was getting all the channels when I was setting up the antenna using my portable tuner checking out. He got all the Philadelphia channels from 60 miles away even though he was in a low-lying area. When I ran the cable to his TV set, he wasn't getting two or three channels that were coming in at the antenna. And I used my tuner to make sure it wasn't his tuner and sure enough they weren't coming in at all. And so what I did is I installed this and they came right back. When I did a rescan on his TV set, he had an extra 10 channels, and although one or two of them pretty much didn't come in at all, they weren't coming in at the top when I was using my tuner, so that explains, you know, it's not gonna amplify a signal that doesn't exist, but it will amplify a signal that's kind of there to the point that if you're running a long cable and it's not there at your TV set, it'll work. 
Now this model, the Radio Shack High Gain Signal Amplifier, is one I would recommend for those of you that aren't sure what your signal is like. If you think you have a really strong signal and then some really weak signals, and you don't wanna go a little too low with the Walmart amplifier, but you don't wanna go too high with the Channel Master amplifier that I'm gonna recommend after this one, this is really cool because it has adjustable gain. So you can use the knob on the control panel to adjust the gain and see how much the signal is increasing on some of the weak channels, but then also monitor the strong stations to make sure you're not overloading it. It also has two coax outputs, which is very convenient because then you don't need a distribution amp if you only have two TV sets. Now I'm very happy that Radio Shack is still manufacturing a preamp because as many of you know, they closed most of their stores and they were the place to go for this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, after the recession, they all kind of disappeared and those of you who are left wondering, what do I do with an antenna? I mean, thankfully I'm here with the YouTube channel, but Radio Shack was definitely the place to go and I'm very glad that they're still making this preamp. Now this model on the screen behind me, the Channel Master CM7777, I think I said all the sevens, works very well for those of you in a very, very bad reception spot where you have no strong signals, everything is incredibly weak to the point that maybe some of the stations don't even show up on antennaweb.org. One instance where I used this was I had a a good friend of mine who was you know an old individual on a fixed income and I refused to let him pay Comcast $30 a month for channels that he didn't watch he only watched two of the local channels so I went above and beyond testing out all these antenna models which some of you probably saw in my previous YouTube video that I posted the top three antenna models and then I also used preamps to see which one would get him this incredibly weak channel because he was down the valley surrounded by mountains to the point that you need the best amplifier to get the signal reliably this worked very well for that scenario. This model also has an FM trap built in, and what that does is if you're near an FM radio station that is like a 50,000 watt station, although you probably wouldn't be if you're in the middle of nowhere and all your stations are weak, what it does is it stops interference from FM radio stations on the VHF band, which can happen once in a blue moon. Again, this model I only recommend for those of you that are in a very bad reception area to the point that your channels are constantly pixelating or some just aren't showing up at all. If you use it in the scenario where you have strong signal, definitely overload the strong signals and you won't get them at all. So those are three preamps that I recommend for three different scenarios. Now, just as a heads up, if you decide to purchase one, they'll come with weatherproof boots to put on the coax. Use them because if you don't use them and after a few months of rain going on the coax, it's possible that some water can be trapped inside the preamp and it can fail as a result. So make sure you use the weatherproof boots on the coax cables that come with the preamp. And if you're not sure how to put them on, subscribe to my channel. I'll show you how to put them on in future videos. Another important thing about setting up an outdoor antenna addition to the preamp is you got to make sure it's properly grounded, both the coax and the mass that it's on. And if you aren't sure how to do that, I include a link in my description that kind of explains it, but I'll also be making a video in the coming weeks on how to properly ground an antenna for those of you that kind of want a video instruction. So follow my channel and you'll see that in the coming weeks. If you have any questions about what antenna or preamp I'd recommend for your scenario, leave me a comment and make sure to mention your zip code so I could look up the signals in your area. Subscribe to my channel and have an awesome day.